Hey everyone, how are you doing? Just a very short video for you. So this video is about how to add a texture to any existing shader which is already in place, so how you can just add another texture to the code and then apply it to your shape. So let's see how we can do that. I double click on the shader, it's going to open it here in Visual Studio Code. There is the code, it's actually pretty simple. So what we're going to do now is to add the second texture to it and we are going to use this texture to wrap it around the shape. Perfect. So what we need to do is to first to add another texture matrix, which is used to apply transformations to the texture coordinates, if we ever want to apply transformations to this texture. Right, so we call it texture1mat because we had a previous one which we call texture0mat, this one we call texture1mat, and this is from the state, which means it's provided by our application by max, and um, this is retrieved by using the name texture one matrix because we already have the first texture, which is the noise. Here, as you can see, is uh, assigned as a texture to the GGL grid shape. So the second texture has index one, so we put a one here. Great. Um, then we need to add the actual texture name. So here we create a param. It doesn't matter the order of these parameters. We can put them in every order. I just put here because it makes sense. So this is the color texture. We call it because it's going to be used to assign the color to the, to the shape. Uh, it's of type integer because this is actually the index of this texture and the index, as we said, is 1 because we already have another texture that has index 0. Good, now we just need to bound these two parameters. So the first parameter, we're going to bind it to the vertex program uh, because we need to do this transformation at the vertex level. So this we bind to program BP and the color texture, we're actually going to bind it to the fragment program so let's put it after the noise texture, bind, param, color text we called it, and let's bind it to the program, fp, which is our fragment program. Great. So now in the vertex program, we want to uh, create some texture coordinates for our new texture. So we bind as a uniform our new matrix to calculate these texture uh, coordinates, transformations, uh, so the texture one mat, and then we need to pass an output variable uh, which contains the texture coordinate for the second texture we have to pass this to the fragment shader so let's actually copy this line and say text code one is equal to texture one mat multiplied by our texture coordinates and then we take all the x and y component great and this was it. Now in the fragment shader we need to get these texture coordinates as an input, so text chord 1, input vec 2, text chord 1, right, because it was an output from the vertex shader and it's going to be an input in the fragment shader. And then we need also to declare our color texture as a uniform sampler 2D, because we are not going to use rectangle 1, so it's not sample 2D rect, but it's sample 2D, color text. Great, and now we need to sample this texture. So vec for color from text is equal to texture. This is this, the function that allows us to sample a texture. The texture that we want to sample, which is color text using the coordinates that we just created in the vertex shader. Uh, great, and then we're going to assign this as the new color. So we're not going to use anymore the color that we got from the vertex shader, we use the color from the texture. Good. So let's see if this actually works. Um, no, it's black because there is no texture assigned, right? So let's create a new texture. Let's actually create a JIT movie object that outputs a texture. Great. Also setting the volume to zero. Uh, let's use maybe the our beloved chickens video and let's attach it to a texture. Sure, um, I'm actually just copied that, but I'm going to call it texture one rectangle zero. We don't care about all the other stuff. Great, so texture one is where our second texture resides. So let's assign it as a second texture to the GGL grid shape. And of course, it's not working. Um, let's check actually if this has been assigned to rectangle zero no okay it's using rectangle one because the texture that comes out from output uh, from jit movie as actually uh, rectangle one so let's actually use rectangle one it's not a big deal so instead of a shader 
instead of using uh, sample 2D, we uh, say sample 2D rect. And this should actually work now. Yes, and it does. All right. Pretty cool, pretty cool. We could try to simulate some kind of shadows and light by in the shader by simply instead of passing the color to to the fragment shader, we could pass actually the the value of the noise itself. So right, we can just say uh, we can just say back for noise. Good. See if this works. Yes. And then, yeah, we can say color from text multiplied by color in the fragment shader. Good. So we have that uh, the, the peaks of the shape are a bit brighter and the ballets are a bit darker. We can actually multiply it by itself once again. So it should look a bit more extreme. Let's try it with another one, another time. Right, now it looks really extreme. Um, okay, cool. So, let me actually delete that. Cool. This is how we can attach a texture to an existing shader. Uh, the only tricky thing is to check if the texture is actually using rectangle 1 or rectangle 0. So, because in that case, we need to choose if we to use the sample 2D rect or simply sample 2D. Right. Uh, I also add here um, bloom effect just because. Uh, but this is a perfect occasion to actually use my new, uh, the new second 74 blur, which is called Bloom AQ. Let's see how this looks like. It looks much better, doesn't it? Cool. Okay, everyone, thank you for watching. I hope this was useful. Download the patch from my Patreon, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao.